It's mailbag time with non copyrighted music. All right. Let's try and sneak the end off here and inside. Ah, SOT 89 to dip adapters, which is good because I've just recently taken delivery of some SOT 89 transistors. But uh, just because of the configuration of these things, you can actually put a few other bits and pieces on them as well. So SOT 223 on one side, SOT 89 on the other side. Useful little guys. And here they are with a couple of transistors soldered up and, uh, and ready to go. So um, yeah, nice adapter boards, very handy. And this guy is choppers full of hmm, maybe DC to DC converters. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. So only one pot here, so presumably that means we can change the voltage, but perhaps not the current. The guy that's doing all the hard work here is an XL6009. And then we've got our direction here, so we've got our in and our out pretty clearly marked. So um, I say we... Uh, Get this hooked up and see if it works. Okay, so we've got, uh, what have we got? Mm, in on this side and out on that side. So I'll just turn this guy around. So in and in positive. A little bit of a squeeze. Oh, hopefully that's a connection there. So looks good with a light and then coming at the other side is god knows what let's try that and that yep nothing interesting let's try again here and here uh, surely not greater than 20 volts Yes, 28 volts. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm. Right. So uh, I might get some wires on this and maybe do some adjustments. Okay. So let's see. 8 volts coming in, 28 coming out. That's 29. So let's go the other way. So it could be buck boost, maybe. If we can get it under 8 volts, it could be buck boost. So pretty nice adjustment. Um, fairly sensitive, which is good. So lots of turns. We're down to 12, 11. Can we get below 8? Yes. Buck boost. Nice. Handy module, I think this one will be. I don't know much about the uh, the chip that's driving it, but um, recollection is that it's fairly efficient, uh, which is probably why I got these guys. So, yeah, and uh, if we go off and back on again, yeah, it holds itself pretty well. Yeah, nice little units, good one. And the winner is, hand me the envelope please. The winner is, what is this? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's little devices for the puppies. Good Lord, there's so much puppy stuff coming in at the moment. So, 
I'm just trying different sorts of little LEDs and their collars. Um, well, this is this is metallic. This is what I wanted to start with. Uh, so I wonder what that does there. Let's take this off. Is that some sort of binding thing? It's quite strange. How do you get this thing going? Hmm. There's a little collar here. So I can take that off. That's appropriate, isn't it, for a dog thing? And what have we got inside? Battery. And an O-ring. But no idea how it's activated. Which is strange. Ah, uh, there we go. So that's what this is for. So, it, yeah, so that's all this, just twist and go. Well, that's pretty clever. Uh, in, it's only got the one pattern, which is um, going to be pretty bright, I think, at night time. So, yeah, another option for keeping, well, not keeping dogs safe, but tracking them down when they're not safe, I guess, is more appropriate. Ooh. Well done, just the way I like it. Big box. I'm expecting a shipment from LCSC, and this looks very LCSC. So maybe that's what it is. And uh, if it is what I think it is, then it's some components that were recommended to um, those who follow on Twitter. Uh, at Sad Electronics or A13, and uh, what they do is that they trawl LCSC for nifty components, and then um, just make recommendations basically. So they spend hours. <laughs> that's their fun to go online and have a look for uh, great components, and then uh, and then just write about them, saying, "Oh, this is a good component," or "This is a good component." The unfortunate thing is that some of the ones that they recommend uh, come out of um, stock really, really quickly. So if you do follow at Sad Electronics um, and you, uh, you're quick, you can grab some great bargains, but uh, you can also miss out. So this one looks like uh, battery management and a SOT23, and this one looks like a boost IC. Uh, yeah, so it looks like you put in... Oh, I'm not sure about this one. Actually, let's open them up and have a look at both of them. Uh, we'll start with the battery management one. And I have to obviously do some data sheet trawling to uh, to find out what this is about. Oh, that's an interesting beast. Let's see if we can get a bit closer to that. So, uh, six pin and... Um, not sure what they do. I'll see if I can track down what the actual part does and also the data sheet and I'll just uh, put that up here and then maybe in a future video I'll solder it up and we'll uh, we'll have a look and see if we can't get it to do what it's supposed to do battery management my recollection is to do with uh, I think it was charging of uh, lithium uh, batteries which should be pretty cool you know if that's what I'm thinking it does so yeah that's the first one and the second one looks like a boost IC but I'm not really sure what the specs are saying on the front like it says 0 0.85 to 5 volts I guess that means but it says boost 3.3 .3 and then it says 200 but it'd be 200 milliamps maybe so again I'll have to look at the specs online um, but let's just have a look and see what it looks like inside. Uh, yes, that looks like a also SOT 23, but this is a SOT 23.5 package. And I think also the best thing to do, I mean, I'll, what I'll do is I'll overlay what I can on this video, but I think in a future video, uh, I might especially grab this out and solder it up and see what it can do. So, yeah, great components. And I think I'm going to keep doing that uh, when Sad Electronics uh, makes these recommendations. They're usually based on price, availability, and specifications. And uh, if they're happy to do all the work, uh, I'm happy to push the, the button on... Uh, 
on buying them at the end of that process. So, yeah, and we'll come back to these in a future video and, uh, and have a look at, uh, at what they do. Ooh, quite a heavy one. And what have we got? A big box of lithium batteries. Wow. Nice. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, very good. Oh, I guess it's a, there's a bit of a sad tale to this one, actually, in that for a long, long time, I uh, have been buying my batteries locally at a dollar store, which in Tasmania we call... <laughs> ship loads and that's an s-h-i-p uh so just watch the spelling on that and uh let me see if i've got one over here yeah here they are so this is how i've been buying them so this has been two dollars in the local store uh for eight of them so 25 cents each is a pretty good get for a cr2032 battery and um, then they went up to three dollars and i was still happy to buy that and then they disappeared and that would have been about mm, maybe eight months ago. And I had probably about mm, 10 cards of these. And so I was just playing the waiting game. And I got down to, you know, five cards, three cards. This is my last. This one is my last. And so probably about four weeks ago, I ordered 100. Now, the price from memory into the country, freight and everything, is around 40 cents each, which is still pretty cheap when you compare it to local uh, prices. Uh, and you just have to wait for them to come in. Uh, so that's good. Whether they work or not, uh, let's find out. So there's a couple of projects I use. Let's see. Uh, so this one, uh, long time viewers will be, um, will remember this, this is one of my Christmas lights. This is the last Christmas light I did. That's Christmas 2021. And that's actually a Paduk. And that is actually a Paduk PMS150C on that. So the famous three cent microcontroller. So um, all it does is that it sits on the fridge at the appropriate festive time of the year and, um, and blinks red and green. So if I can find a way of getting that battery out. There we go. And we'll put this one in. And generally, because the, the uh, process is running so slow and uh, so anemically, these things will flash for probably around uh, three months or so. Can we see that? Yeah. It's not picking up every flash because of the shutter uh, rate on the camera, but it is actually flashing pretty regularly uh, to the naked eye. So that's, that's an interesting effect. But yeah, so these things will sit uh, on the fridge for quite some time and um, maybe three months, four months. Mm, actually, I think longer. I think I put them up around about December and I think, I think it went through to probably around about uh, May before they started actually finally failing. So um, that's one of the projects I use them in around Christmas time. But the one that probably crops up more often is the clocks that I've got around the place. So these are clocks. This is a very old version. I have been promising to uh, to do a video on the new PCB version that I make now. But you can see here, this is the old Atmega 328. Um, worth a fortune now, but probably around about a dollar when I bought them. And um, the whole project uh, sits on these three um, 1.5 volt AA batteries. But as well as that, I'll just chuck those out, as well as that, it's got this, the backup battery for the DS3231 module, which sits underneath here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and then you've just got your PIR uh, and, you've got, and you've got your display. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll place the, the main batteries. Um, I'm going to replace the backup battery first. So this will be a real test of these new ones. So I'll pop that in. And then we'll pop in the... I've got some fresh double A's here. Yep. So that, let me get this sorted out and I'll... Oh, here we go. 
Yeah, this is one of the very early ones. Probably about the second or third one I made, actually. 17 degrees, it says. That's nice. But I'd like to set the time, thanks. So if I push that, it should set at the next one. There we go. And then we've got two buttons here. And it's around about, I think it's about half past six at night. I'll get the exact time. Let's do that. Yeah, and done. And then the next time it comes up, it should do temperature and time. So there's your time coming up slowly. It's uh, 12 minutes past six-ish and 17 degrees. Yeah, so those ones pretty work, work okay. And the idea is that if the main batteries fail, the, uh, the little CR2032 in there um, backs up the time. So they're the projects that I use that in. And um, those little batteries will come in handy. It's a bit of a shame, as I said, that the local supplier has suddenly stopped doing it. I really would like to support uh, that, but um, yeah, just not able to get them. I guess that's the case with a lot of things at the moment. Uh, a large package, but quite light. And we have, oh, many packages inside, okay. <laughs> nice, drop shipping. All right, let me get some of these sorted out. Let's start with this one here. So we've got, hmm, one little tiny thing in there. Yeah. Oh, that's a very satisfying noise. I don't want to cut into it because I'm just not sure what's in there. Two chips. <laughs> ah, yes, an experiment. Oh my God, I don't want to keep, well, I keep doing this to myself. Okay, so these are STM32 analogs. Actually, I'll take them out and we'll get right down close and have a look. Yes, yeah, so of course the um, the Paduk project that continues to uh, to suck up a lot of my time, but very rewarding. Uh, it includes a programmer that uses an STM32 chip. Now you can't get hold of the STM32 chips at the moment, and uh, if you can get hold of them, uh, they are hideously expensive. So somewhere of the order, I have seen up to them, no joke, ninety US dollars each and sometimes with a lead time of maybe 18 months or more. So I just spotted these on AliExpress and I thought, I wonder if an STM32 analog, which uh, some of the Chinese suppliers have been manufacturing, would do the trick. It won't, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, if I've had enough, I have had all these troubles with the, um, you know, with the correct uh, chip. I'm pretty sure that the um, that this one will not uh, do the trick. But um, yeah, so it's a what have we got here? G G D S T zero. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, pretty unlikely it's going to work. But at some stage, I'll do a video on um, making a paduk in the oven uh, using one of these and just see if we can't maybe. Uh, replace the STM32 with something a little cheaper and probably better still available. That is the mailbag for the week and uh, we'll catch you next time. See ya.